recently a great article uh, that I was shared through the Sebastian Lober uh, mailing list, React Hebdo. You again, I won't say it enough. You should subscribe, even if it's in French, because you still get the title. I mean, I just love his editorial choices. I just feel very connected to it. Ten insights to run TypeScript at scale from Bloomberg, from uh, Rob Palmer, lead of uh, JavaScript infrastructure at Bloomberg. Really interesting article. The scale at which they are using JavaScript and TypeScript is absolutely incredible. 50 million lines of code and 2,000 <laughs> 2, engineers working on TypeScript. It's just, I mean, I, I, for me, the scale is hard to... Uh, to comprehend, but for them, TypeScript is obviously a, a critical aspect of making such a code base and teams uh, scale. Uh, did you check out the article? Yeah, I looked at it a bit and was uh, like pleasantly surprised or that they were actually using TypeScript to modernize their infrastructure. I mean, if you know their product, like the the like the Bloomberg, ter the Bloomberg terminal and and all that stuff. It's like, it looks like from the 80s. Um, and the fact that they are actually now like using modern technologies to like, to make it, to still keep improving it. It's, it's quite cool. Yeah. I felt, so 10 insights, I really enjoyed some of the insights. Some of the, of the insights felt like they were more uh, focused on their particular use cases that we are unlikely to encounter ourselves as, I mean, as React Native developers in React Native uh, workflows. But what was interesting also about these, these insights is that even if they mention use cases that we are not really concerned about, it shows you that if they can do it, if they can do it at such scale, we can do it. Because overall, they seemed, I mean, it sounds like such a crazy project. And at the end, it sounds like they seem to be very happy with it. Uh, that was also interesting to read that here the technology was also evangelized uh, by the engineers themselves. So it was not like a top-bottom decision, but also uh, engineers were pushing uh, the usage of TypeScript across uh, the company, which was, uh, I found, interesting. That That's... Amazing. So if we are talking about 50, millions line, 50 million lines of code, do we know if it's like one project or if it's, or if they have like many separate repos? 10,000 apps. 10,000 apps. So it seems like they are embracing the, the microservice culture a lot. It sounds like it, yeah. Uh... I mean, I couldn't imagine having like one project with 50 million lines of code, no. of TypeScript code, and that be a developer experience that would be acceptable or like bearable for the developers? The first key insight was about, I love the first key insight because so the first key insight is TypeScript is JavaScript plus types. And this is such an important, important concept to understand. You know, I do my YouTube videos in TypeScript and people often ask me, why don't you use JavaScript? And I am using JavaScript because, I mean, at the end of the day, the Babel plugin just ignores the type annotation. And I think that's really important to, to see TypeScript this way. So it's just, it's not a different language. It's just type annotation on top of your language. We know that there are differences in the language. So... In the article, Rob mentions the namespace keyword, enum. But apparently, it also mentions that there won't be any more uh, language changes. Now, it's all about the adding type to the, to the existing uh, JavaScript standard. Yeah, right. Um, I think this, this makes a lot of sense that they don't treat it as like, a, a different language. Of course, TypeScript has like enums, which don't exist in JavaScript. Yes. Seems relatively safe to use. I never had any any problems with it. Same. Um, but but you know, you have to you have to future proof it. Mm. I think JavaScript will will stay there forever. It's kind mm -hmm. of incredible, but uh, it's it will probably be around for a long time yes um but 
I mean, people who started using co- CoffeeScript were like surprised that, wow, actually the language is moving to a different direction. And that now CoffeeScript, if you use that, I mean, everybody's migrating away from it. It seems to be like a mistake in hindsight. And so it's so funny you say that. It makes me think about, I mean, now it's a long time ago when I, I read the original memo about Dart when they released the Dart language. And they were mentioning it. Basically, we have two, we are on the crossroad. We can either try to improve the existing improved JavaScript, so meaning adding the type system and modernizing the language, or we can take the, the other road, which is to have like a completely new language designed from the ground up. And it's hard to believe that actually the road of the incremental improvements went as far as it did. I mean, we're commenting on the new TypeScript releases all the time. I mean, now the language is so modern. The type system is so good, better. I mean, we mentioned it in previous videos. It's better than some other uh, top-bottom uh, type systems. And uh, I mean, yeah, like you said, it's interesting to see that TypeScript is, JavaScript, TypeScript is winning this battle of uh, via, via incremental improvements that we didn't have to change technology. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think it's very, it's very crucial that they they stay close to this uh, path as well. Like it's it's like they like it's even in in the name. They they don't try to say it's not, it's not JavaScript. Um, <laughs> they, clearly, um, it's JavaScript, but with types, and I think this makes perfect sense. Um, and I mean, TypeScript nowadays is even so powerful that. Um, so, the, for example, the optional chaining operator it first came to TypeScript, and uh, only now it's also supported by by JavaScript in the browser. Mm. Um, but it it was like more or less at at the same time. Um, so it's nice that you get these features, but they only added it because it's also a JavaScript feature now. Yeah. And another key insight is about, and that's something we talk about a lot when, when we meet, is to always keep up with the latest versions of TypeScript. Because uh, with each new version, you get great compiler improvements that can really dramatically help you manage the typings of your code, the potential technical uh, debt of your code. And even though in the article it's mentioned, of course, sometimes there are breaking changes, uh, these things have a cost, but basically the insight is that it's worth it. And I, I could not agree more, especially uh, the progress that the TypeScript project is making is are so substantial that, yeah. Yeah, I, no question TypeScript is, is worth it. Um, I'm, the fact that they have like 10,000 different uh, projects it makes me think that there must be some interdependency between them. And I, I wonder what, what, uh, how they do it. It's absolutely insane. It explains in, uh, in the article. Is, uh, it's... And I love how in the article it's almost uh, casually explained. But you know that at such a scale, 2,000 developers, 10,000 apps, 15 uh, million lines of code, you know that behind it's a lot of pain and tears. And, and, um, but yeah, in the article, the article is really very positive and, and things are explained, also the uh, dependencies and everything and all the edge cases. But you know that in practice, it must have <laughs> some pain must have been caused, right? Yeah, 10,000 projects, 50 million lines of code. We don't have any problems at all. <laughs> in, in, uh, at some point in the article, there is a... Uh, uh, edge case mentioned with a strict null type check, which can type. So it gives an example where uh, um, this compiler option can change a type. So a type can be. And so the example, the type, a particular type, becomes either a string or a number, be, depending on uh, on uh, this option. You know that for this example to be written in the article, you know that something really crazy must have happened that caused like some strong bugs that probably made a lot of people scratch their head especially at, uh, at such a scale so it's just uh, <laughs> I just found the thing absolutely fascinating <laughs> one thing um, I'm wondering is if 
if they are using TypeScript project references. You know uh, what it is? No. Uh, well, I try to optimize my TypeScript as well because unfortunately TypeScript is not multi-threaded and it, I also, there was also no Apple Silicon back then, so it was <laughs> slow, right? <laughs> Hopefully it will improve in the future. Um, so the TypeScript documentation says if your project is building too slowly, then use TypeScript project references and basically you split your your whole repo up into different folders. Each one is their own TypeScript project. So you can cross import the files, but like there are separate projects and one will only rebuild if uh, if a file in that folder has changed. Mm. And then if you make a change in a project reference that requires another project reference, it will rebuild the old one. But the idea is to just rebuild the the parts that are needed and nice. that way it's supposed to be scalable. It's good. I I initially noticed a a slight improvement in in compilation time by like 30-40%. Um but I have problems with the auto importing. So if I add like a new symbol to a to a file and then try to import it not other ways and I actually need to type it out, otherwise it will VS Code will not recognize it. For uh, what kind of uh, project are you using this feature? So, so I'm using it for my Bestand app. I had the great idea to put like the app, the website, the web server, um, all into one repo and then like make like a core, so I could mm -hmm. like import components, use React Native Web, really crazy stuff. I mean. I'm still happy with it uh, overall, but of course it's it's like like 1,200 TypeScript files, and I bought the fastest laptop I Intel i9. It's still slow, man. <sighs> make it multi-threaded. But if Bloomberg can do it, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. So I so I guess the takeaway is that I still haven't found out the right way to do it. Wow. Yeah. Fascinating.